Well, hey, G Holla, G Dot Holla. Girl, G E Holla. Shout out to God here, man. Salute to you. Shout out to G Holla reaching. Shout out to G Holla. Oh, y'all said in Taylor. Shout out my guy, G Holla, on my Celebrity Life podcast. It's your girl, Cynthia Bailey from The Real Housewives of Atlanta, and I'm sending a shout out to G Holla of my celebrity life. Wow, wonderful up and coming artist. And she's all about loving herself, in spite of what others may think. She's sexy, she's strong, and she learned that she is enough, and she is ready to do herself. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. It's to Mel. What's up, what's up, what's up? So, let us know where you're from originally. Take us back through your... Well, I'm originally from Philly. Born and raised in the second. I know, shout out to Elwesna. <laughs> so, I'm originally born and raised from Philly. I um came to Atlanta. I started out, well, I was from the beginning. My father's a music teacher, so music was oh. all in my household. Like, it was just singing, pass me the toilet paper. <laughs> we was like, okay, let's make that <laughs> So all my life, I've been singing actually before I could talk. That was like my first thing that everybody was saying. I was like humming a, a baby, just humming and mimicking everything. Um, so uh, growing up in Philly in a household with music, uh, my parents got separated. So my oh. mom moved in the neighborhood. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, it's life. You know. But um, uh, we moved in another neighborhood and my uh, neighbor, was a music producer and a manager. And I probably was like nine at the time. And he was like, yo, I got this girl group I'm working with and um, I want you to be a part of it. And I was like, well, you gotta ask my mom. So it was just, you know, I met the group. They were already kind of established on like local um, uh, talent shows and stuff and winning every show they was doing. So I kind of came in at the end and that's when we got a, a buzz in Philly as kids, and it was just, it was dope. We got the likes of Left Eye and um, Jazzy Jeff, like just some dope, dope people that just was like, yo, I recognize y'all, like, let's, you know, kind of took me, us under their wings. Then unfortunately, you know, the um, Left Eye passed. Losing her was like a big detrimental part of just the world, per se, you know what I'm saying? So I moved to Atlanta. <laughs> And because I just wanted to just start from scratch and just kind of rehabilitate from that situation, mentally and physically, I was like, I just need a new start. I just need to, you know, just figure me out. And then I moved to Atlanta and I met some of the greats again, took me under their wings. And now we're here with my first EP dedicated. Um, and, and that was just a long story short because... <laughs> I could write a book about my life. Like, it's crazy, <laughs> the things that I've been through already. Um, but yeah, so I came to Atlanta and I just wanted to just kind of always keep my Philly edge with being in Atlanta and just more so just letting girls know that you can be anything you want to be in life and still do it in a cool way because you don't have to be so, ah, you can do, you know what I mean? But you, I'm just a, a vessel of everything that you could possibly think of that will beat you up and tell you to just quit and i'm like for for me to be able to tell the next and show the next that look you can do it if i can do it like just it's all it's all here and in, in your heart so that's how i came up with dedicated it was the process of my life so far and where i'm at right now that's crazy you have this essence to you which you know, I absolutely love and adore thus far because it's that 90s vibe. The 90s vibe produced a different level of female R&B artists that you can never forget about. Aaliyah name will never go anywhere. Left Eye will never go. TLC, all of those greats. Tony Braxton, you got that same energy to you where it's like the cool, laid back chick. You know, that's what Aaliyah was. She was the cool, laid back. You could just vibe with her, whether you out dancing or you in the car or you coming over to where she's at. And she's creating this essence of this love energy. This is who you are. You have it. I already know you operate from here more than you operate from here. And because a lot of people think um, that the heart is, isn't is greater than the mind, but really the, the heart is, is the greatest aspect of the mind. Your heart dictates to you where you should go, what you should write, what you should be a part of. The brain is just following suit with the logical part. 
but it's the emotions, that vibration that pulls people in. And you definitely got that energy when you pull people in. Emotion. You, you're, you, whether you believe this or not, you're on a, you're on a higher spiritual path, even though you're doing music. I'm sorry, what? You're on a higher spiritual path, even though you're doing music. Your music is just like a doctor. You're going to be able to heal and help someone get through their daily life. Through all of your struggles, it's going to help somebody else struggle. Man, that means a lot because that's what I want to do. Like when I stop trying to chase fame and stop trying to chase things and just let it be and just speak my truth, I promise. Like I've had, I've had so much satisfaction just doing mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, if my music or if I could change somebody's life for the good. Bro, I did my purpose, like, period. Like, my purpose is done. Like, I mean, it's not done. It's still going. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's, the pur that's the purpose of me. And I want to live in my purpose. So. You are. You are. You are that very same purpose. I like what you said. They say, don't chase and replace, but attract and relax. Know everything that you're just coming to you, just like you're standing at a bus stop or you're getting ready to catch the train. You know what time it takes off. You know what time the bus is coming. So just go wait at the bus stop and it'll, it'll bring your destiny will bring it to you. And then carry you off into a new place with a new destiny. That's the essence of who you are. Period. I love <laughs> and it's on its way. So just a few questions about, you know, left eye and things of that nature, because she's such an iconic and revolutionary figure too at the same time. You know, she's known for her being strong in life. And you know, too, being a woman coming from Philly, which is a strong city, moving to Atlanta, which is a strong city. What, what, what was it like being around her? Can you give us a little detail, a little insights? Um, it was, it's kind of, it's difficult because she, she has such a presence um, that I still have never met anybody in my life like that, like ever. But at the same time, I was so young, I didn't understand the presence. So I'm still learning stuff from her as an adult. Like, damn, that's what she was trying to tell me. Or that's what she was trying to show me. Or that's what she was trying to teach me. Just about being a new artist and how it's like high school and everybody want the new, you know, everybody want to know the new popular person. Or everybody want to know what, you know, so I, certain things I'm learning now. So her position in my life as a kid, it's, it's like, it's still present. It's crazy. It's still like, I'm still like, oh, that's what she was talking about. Like still to this day. So like, I don't know. She was just a special being. And I feel like she lived her purpose. And I think she made such an impact that her purpose was fulfilled. You know what I mean? And it took me a while to understand that, but I understand it because she's changed lives, not just touched lives. She's changed lives. So, and I'm one of them. So, yeah. That's right. That's right. And if you think about it, if the person that you are aligned to, the universe has aligned you to it, greatness is because you already great yourself. Now what we're doing, if you think of life like seeds, when you, you plant a seed, it comes off of a plant. So if that plant in itself is bearing good fruit and therefore you are the seeds of the product of the good fruit, here comes your turn as you going to create and bear good fruit for others. And guess what's going to happen? The same thing you said about her, somebody going to say about you, T. They're going to say, wow, meeting her, she had that energy. She had that vibration. She had that synchronicity. Her music got inside of me and it changed my world. It gave me hope. Do Me is giving people hope out there to the hopeless. And I know you know that. And I know you've seen that in the culture and seen that around you where people have lost hope and they needed something in their life to help carry them. Well, guess what? We got you. Uh, You're the new um. Hey. That's what's up. That's 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 a that's a big act to follow. What you just said, I'm like, damn. I, I hope I'm all of that. But, <laughs> but you are. Like, I'm just I'm just doing me. I just got a thing, me. I just got to be me. Why you always acting like you're on shoot? Hot as hell, think it's time I ring the bell Oh, you think your daddy is something You got me, got me finna head Everything I see is red. You must really thought you had me 
you something Say I just really need space to do me from Philly to the ATL shouted. So what happened there? You said some more people took you under the wing. Can we can we talk a little bit about that? Can we go into that chapter of your life? Um, the likes of Usher, um, Brian Michael Cox. I mean, Usher is just, that's, that's no introduction needed. Uh, Brian Michael Cox, he's the um, I've done records with uh, Fantasia. Um, I did some, I did, I got on Molly World with Future's mixtape that was like super big and then a few years ago, it was like popping. So Molly World, I was the only R&B song. A lot of people, a lot of my fans know me from Pill. It's the song called Pill that was, it was like 23, 23 records on a, um, on a mixtape. And I was the only R&B song and it was just like, a, a real ballad. <laughs> but it was talking about me being your drug instead of you using the drugs so you know I always try to put a little some 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 type of positivity in my music so um who else I mean I just you know I've been everybody a little sis so um yeah that's just to name a few I can't really think of everybody at this moment moment but you know I've been blessed to get some great people giving me some good input and wanting to do something with me and oh Tricky Stewart the dream um can't forget about them. They they definitely did some great things. We did some great things together. So I mean Okay. Can, can, can we pop this pill right now? I want to take them back. Can we can we can we take a pill? You got time for a pill. Can we do it? It's a drug. It's geeked up music, geeked up music, geeked up music. Take me, I can be your king. 
as well by the pandemic or pandemic people got their own different theories about it so what did you learn for the for the past two years being in lockdown we couldn't really move around like that per se but what did you learn from the pandemic I mean, the pandemic wasn't of, of, of course first of all um i just lost my my eye from um uh the virus so it was nothing to play with so it's affected us close to people close to us not close to us i mean we've seen the world be affected by it so i don't want to say that the pandemic was good at all but it had a, it gave me a chance to really just dive into the studio and have time because everything was closed so the studio and i knocked out an album and i was more creative than i ever been in my career so far so um i took advantage of the uh, and um, I just put it in the song so that's how I dealt with the pandemic but you know what I mean besides uh, except for the you know the stuff that we all was affected by but I just turned it into creativity and I did it from there did that yeah, you definitely, you definitely did that. You killed them with the, with the do me. And uh, my condolences to on losing your aunt as well, your family member doing that uh, crazy time too. So you know, God bless you and your family, and uh, may her a legacy and memory live on forever. So, but, I redid many Ripperson, loving you. I dropped that like two years ago. So oh, baby.
one second, y'all. Hold on one second. Did you just hit the B Chalet high note? Did you just do that? You know, that was oh my god. Okay, we're going back. I'm sorry, y'all. She hit the high note. I, I, I had to look around. I thought this was B Chalet. I'm looking at the video like what? 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 So let me make sure. Let me see. Put them shades down. Let me see what you look like. Uh, you trying to hide? You trying? You trying to hide? You trying to? Hide. It's, it's Tamel. I T S T M E L L E. Can't miss it. Um, it's that's everything. It's Tamel. Facebook. That's my um Twitter. That's my Instagram. That's my Snapchat. Yeah, if you want to so tap in, it's Tamel. I T S T M E L L E. Ooh. So what's next for you? Can you tell us? I know you um you're gonna be moving around a lot more. That's they kind of relax them with COVID 19s uh, precautions. So can you tell us what you got going on next? Well, summer. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, man. I um I just released a new single. Um, called Work for It. You know, I always gotta put it's it's sexy. It's a a fun summer vibe, but um. I always got to put that motivation in it. So I'm telling the guys, it, it, it don't come easy. You're going to have to work for it. But also, anything in life worth having is worth working for. So it just turns it into a work, 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 work. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. And I then feel. I'm mm-hmm. dropping some. So just stay tuned for everything is to know. It's to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautiful voice man that is amazing i know your family is proud of you because you're definitely doing your thing you represent uh the ladies very well i was checking out some of your visuals too um love the hair you know i love the fact that you you know you rocking your hair you're doing you you on your ancestry vibe i could feel it within there you know also i could feel that uh you're just real you're authentic and that's what we need in this business and life I think a lot of beautiful young black babies growing up, especially the ladies, they need to see someone like you and you need to be iconic on their wall, just like they have Marilyn Monroe and all these other different uh, cultures. I think they need to be rocking Tamel on their walls. Like back in the day, people used to take their rap magazine pages and put it all around the wall. I think you definitely need to be honored in that way because you're so authentic, you're so genuine, and you're just real, and and you're just really a sweetheart. You deserve all the good things that's coming to you. Sweet. I appreciate you. I appreciate. You. Just a few more questions. I ain't gonna hold you too much longer because I know you you busy. You, to, you out here moving around, doing your thing. So, what are your ideal features of certain people you would like to work with moving forward now in your life? I know you've had some great people uh, back in the day, and they still wonderful doing their things. You got any any? Let's say this like this: any fantasy or ideal collaborations you would like? Well, Kendrick Lamar. Ooh. Drake, um, Drake, <laughs> Drake, Drake, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm so weak, <laughs> um, uh, oh my gosh, I mean, Megan, uh, Cardi, I mean, I, it's, I'm, I, I love art, so I, like anybody that I could bounce ideas with and us be creator be creators together, that's that's just popping to me. You know what I mean? So, but that's the top of my list, of course. Like Drake, Kendrick, they like oh, I love those two. I love everything they be talking about. And they they speak for the feet, they speak a lot like they, they say the things that I want to hear as a female. So I'm going to put it like that. So I would love to do a perspective of, even though they, they're they good at speaking to me, I want to speak to them. So like speak for the females. For, you know what I mean? Like I'll be the spokesperson for the females because they be telling us what they think we want to hear sometimes. I'm like, nah, let me tell you it like this. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Give us some game right now because you know, Tupac said it best. We get our name and our game from a woman. You know, a lot of times we as men, we think we know something because we only got our knowledge from other men. Now, maybe it may work for them because, you know, each individual person has their own appeal. But what are some things that we could give to the fellas out there when it comes to approaching a lady? Because some brothers just really don't know. They think they know, but they don't know. And how do how does one properly 
communicate with the lady. And I know it may sound simple to you. You may be like, well, they should already know. But sometimes people just don't know. What should they do? Give us some Give us some game. Give us some rules. Give us some understanding right now. Because you're speaking for the ladies, and we appreciate that. When you're trying to approach it, a shorty in the street, a John in Philly, that's what we say, a John, a <laughs> dick in the street, or wherever it may be, pay attention. Like, I was, I love sneakers. I love fashion. And not because it's name brand or whatever, but I like when somebody pays attention, like, oh, man, I like um, the new Yeezys or the, or the new Jays. Just even something where it's like, oh, wow, I read that book before if a girl was at Starbucks reading a book or... Like, just, okay, spark an interest that you might think that it's not just, oh, hey, you beautiful. Yo, you sexy. Yo, what's up? What's your Instagram? Now, it ain't numbers no more. It's like, <laughs> what's your IG? If you if you say no, I don't, I don't, I don't give my number out. Or I got a boyfriend. So, what's your IG? And now they're hitting you on the DMs, but nah. So, I feel like pay attention to the girl if she's... Mm -hmm rocking something because i mean right honestly it has to be physical because if you coming at me it's a physical thing so get physical like oh i like yo i saw them versace glasses blah, 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 and you sparking a conversation or like yo have you tried their food over there across the street that's a conversation that is your, that's your best bet to me at getting a girl like me or any of my girlfriends all my girlfriends are beautiful as well like that type of stuff, sparking the interest and paying attention, period. That's it. If a girl look on the phone and she look like she got something, just leave her alone. Or just say, if nobody told you today, you beautiful and walk away. Oh my God. She might follow you. She might be like, he just, I wasn't feeling pretty today. And he just brightened up my day. Like he might, she might follow you in public. So follow you somewhere just because she needed to hear that. Try that. Just be like, I don't want nothing. I just want to tell you, if nobody told you today, you are beautiful and walk away. Oh, my God. you going to make her smile. You're going to, I don't care if she's the meanest girls of the meanest. She going to smile from that. And she going to think about that. Thank me later. Thank me later. Absolutely, that's right. I don't care if nobody told you this day. You, your spirit is beautiful. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much. And I see that picture in the background. What, what's what's going on back there? It kind of like you a little bit. Got the, got the afro. What's not? What's what's good with the picture? Can you see it? The um, painting, the portrait behind you. Oh, you talking about this? I'm thinking. I'm, 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 I'm talking about you too. I'm talking about both y'all at the same time. Well, let's what's, what's good with the portrait. I'm in a hotel, so that's the art that they decide to bring. And I thought it was cool. I thought it was okay. cool. I decided to put it in the back. Beautiful mind that you have in your wonderful soul. You have to choose seven artists of all times, whether they're living or dead, to go on a do you do I'm sorry, do me world tour. Now, let's just say you've been around one of the greatest, most iconic and legendary females there were in the business, which is left eye. You could say, hey, for this tour, I want to resurrect her. And you can also choose people that are still alive, too, as well. So long story short, we're going on this world tour with you. Which seven artists of all time, living or dead? TLC, left eye. That's number one. Okay. Um, that's one um, That's one all together. We can get T-Boz and chill. Everybody rolling this one. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's see. Drake. Drake. Mini Ripperton. Shaka Khan. Okay. And we need some, we need some soul. We need some James Brown. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, I got many. James Brown, Manny Ripperton, TLC, Drake. And you said seven? I uh hope -huh, you got two more left. My SATs again. Okay, um, uh, <laughs> Uh, Migos. Okay, that's one. So you get six. <laughs> oh, Doja Cat. That's okay. That's my, show. my show is all over the place, like me. So, yep. You're going to be entertained like a mug, though. <laughs> hey, you know what? Um, control K, I call it control chaos theory. Even, even in the art of destruction, there still is a level of peace. When you look at a hurricane or a tsunami, 
or in the eye of the storm, what they refer to it, it's the calmest place that there is. But on the outside, it's complete destruction. Mm, yeah. But it's chaotically controlled because it doesn't it doesn't destroy the world. Bro, you deep. I like that. Okay, appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? I, I see so, you. I'm, I'm, here's another thing. Hmm. It's constructed in such a way to whereas it's a magnet. And by souls, we recognize each other. Whether you believe it or not, when you say, oh, no, that's not for me. This is me. I do this. But however, I'm telling you, there's something about you that has made you different your whole entire life. It has put you in places. It has set you in high places. Even if you may have not felt or felt that you deserve to be there, it's just part of your destiny. And as you move along, you're going to further awaken. And one day you're going to have this oneness, which is the thought of understanding exactly who you are and what you're supposed to do. Now, you're already unstoppable. But when you reach that point of attainment, when your crown begins to really shine and illuminate, nobody, including yourself, is going to be able to tear you down, bring you down from that. Wow. Wow. You see, you just did what to me when I said the guy, all the guys need to do to all the people. <laughs> so now if we was in the grocery store, I'd be following you around like, where he at? He just said some nice stuff about me. Where he at? <laughs> 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 but you just dang. Thank you. <laughs> That's his family too. That's friend family. So yeah, yeah, you in there? You still in there? How how is um DJ Jazzy Jeff? You know how how is he doing? How's he as a person? I, I had to talk to him since I was a kid, but I um I don't you know talk to him frequently. But um I'm cool with Charlie Mack. Charlie Mack is uh Will Smith's one of his best friends as well. Um so I think they, I think they're cool. I think everybody's good. I mean I see them on social media. Everybody is doing them. You know what I mean? But I will I do want to say this. It's so hard to make it out of Philly because we have some greats, but like maybe like Detroit or even LA or Chicago might have so many people that are iconic. But I feel like because it's so hard to make it out of Philly, like to that level, we're on, we're like one of the best in when we make it like from the Kevin Hart's like him or not, he's, he's the best right now. He's at the top of the game. Like, you know what I mean? Will Smith, actor, comedian, uh, act, I mean, it's like Patti LaBelle is from Philly. Come on, Patti. Auntie Patti, come on. Like, Jill Scott, Jasmine Sullivan is doing her thing. It's like people who come from Philly, when you make it out of Philly, it's like nothing that you can't conquer because you made it out of the trenches. So I'm excited and I love being from Philly. Even when people say, start saying you're from Atlanta. I'm like, no, I'm from Philly. This blood bleeds Philly. Like, no, I'm from Philly. So I just want to give that still, because a lot of people don't really realize how many people are from Philly. It's not a lot of us, but the ones that made it out of Philly have changed the world in some way. So I love my city. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? That does make sense. I never, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, it's a lot of dope people. It's a lot of people in the industry that maybe we haven't even heard of, like behind the scenes type of feel. Yeah, um, whether it be Philly, Philly has a sound. It's called the Sound of Philly. Um, Gamble and Huff, like you know, some of the great songwriters. Like we got some. We, the Roots, come on, The Roots. Mm -hmm. Like don't play, don't play with The Roots. One of the best, the best black bands ever. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, we 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 sitting up there, and then to the next, you know, Scott, man, I got some good people around me, and I'm I've learned about a lot of my business in the sense of like where my money is going, making sure that my paperwork is right, making sure that I own my masters, like that type of stuff is important. The worst thing you want to be is and actually left eye said it like so artist working and you ain't seeing no money because it's going to everybody else except your pockets <laughs> so you 
I, I definitely make sure that I um, you have some good people around me too, but I have to, you got to learn the business. Like people feel like music is an easy way to make some money and it can be for some people, but at the same time, it's a business and you got to handle your business and you got to know your business because luck of but luck will get you. But so far, if you don't know your stuff, because somebody is sitting back buying mansions and cars with your, with your money and your publishing, if your business ain't handled right. So, so kids, make sure you study, read, research. The internet is there. You can learn everything about royalties, masters, everything. So, and make sure you write. Make sure you're a part of your, the process so you can get your credits and you do your splits right. And yeah, that's it. Okay. No, no. <laughs> And, and, and just touch on, I promise I can hold you much longer. Um, touch on what you were saying about left eye. Number. You're right. I remember seeing a video uh, interview back in the day on YouTube when they were talking about how they sold, they went diamond. It was like, the, I think, uh, are they still, did, I don't know if Destiny Child overtook them, but I know they was like the highest selling girl group of all time. And they were saying that their Grammy uh, win, they was like, we broke. <laughs> like they were very candid. T-Boz and um, Chili, like, we, we broke. <laughs> I saw that interview on YouTube and left I broke down how where that money goes and how the the label has to recoup all, all their money before you see any money. So you just working for free, basically. And they like, she like, we broke. Like, dang. But it's so, mm -hmm. go ahead. It's a it's a it's a crazy industry. That's why I I don't it hurts me to think I really love this, like I really love what I do. Because I'm so talented in so many other things, and I'm actually doing some um, joint ventures, and I just did a, a, a workout clothing line and doing things because I don't want to limit myself. But at the same time, it's like I love music. It's like what I wake up doing. What I what I, I don't even realize I'm singing. I'm humming all day. It's like something I love. So I always say music chose me. I didn't choose it. But at the same time, if I was if I had a passion for something else, I'd be like, all right, I'm probably gonna do this because the music industry is is tough. So when kids be like, oh I'm a rat, I'm a I'm like, do you really want to do it or you just think it's just some quick money or you just want to be famous, you want to do it for girls. Like mm -hmm. do it because it's here, not because it's here. That's gonna come. You know what I mean? If you do it from if with the love and with the knowledge, but that's a whole nother story. But you know, kids, make sure y'all just if y'all wanna be in the music industry, make sure y'all learn about the music industry, <laughs> please, because you're gonna end up wanting to hurt somebody because your feelings gonna get hurt. Oh, this your girl, it's to know, and I'm with my celebrity life with G Holla. Holla at your girl. of Lisa Left Eye Lopez. A year ago, she perished in a fatal car accident while on a holy pilgrimage of physical and spiritual cleansing in Honduras. These spiritual cleansings were something Lisa did to get away from her everyday life as a pop star, and they helped the renowned singer-rapper to become uh, one with herself. We have her group, Egypt, in the house to celebrate her life today. With How y'all doing? How are you? Now, can you all start by introducing yourself? Hi, I'm Katrina. How you doing? I'm Tamel, everybody. Right. Hello, everyone. I'm Joy. What's up? I'm Sophia. Okay. Welcome. And we're in Egypt. Right, we we're in Egypt. You gonna tell us how did how did you all meet uh, Left Eye and how did you all know her? Well, actually, we met her through her uncle, who is one of our managers, Kyle Young, Kyle, Kyle Young. Young Designs, and Marvin McIntyre, and um, that's our second manager. And um, it was history from there. We met through Kyle, and Lisa loved us, and, and, and she just formed you as one of. Of her right. Yes. Yes. Right. What are your fondest really memories of uh, Left Eye? Fondest memory of Left Eye. Um, what Lisa. Do think about the most? Lisa was so fun. Yes. She yes. was so exciting. Like she was fun to be around. She was the realest person mm -hmm. I have ever met. Yeah. When we first met her, I was like a little nervous because I was like, um, I was like, or is she going to accept us? Because you know how stars be. Yeah. Oh. But she was so, she was like a sister, like like a big sister. And I miss her yes, so much. We, we all miss, miss her. her. Okay. So wow. She is forever in all of our hearts. And, all of our and especially in her fans. Yeah, exactly. Because she loves y'all the most. Left Eye's group Egypt in the house. Now, we actually have a special tribute. And today's old school joint is TLC's Waterfalls. Take a look. Many of us believe Lisa Left Eye Lopez to be the 
by a cracker of TLC, the feisty, larger-than-life element that fits so perfectly into the group. We want to take this time to send her family and her friends our condolences and the other members of TLC as well. We'd also like to celebrate and honor what Left Eye gave the world through her music. Definitely. We're sitting up here with Egypt. It was uh, Left Eye's group, and they were actually in the car you know, when, when the accident took place. And tomorrow marks the, the death of the one-year anniversary of her passing. Did you all want to do something, or are you all planning on doing something to celebrate her life? Yeah, we, um, we actually wanted to sing a song from another artist that Lisa loved to hear us sing. And she always said it brought tears, tears to her eyes, so we just want to sing this. And, um, just Same listen song to the words. Sung, it, sung at her own funeral. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, you've been so good to me. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, I'm grateful for my blessings. I'm grateful for my struggles, trials and tribulations I've been through. I've realized no one can love like you do. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. I feel your presence near. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. I won't hold back my tears. I gave you my trust, and you took me out of the dark rain. My Lord, I survived it. I give you the praise. Lord, you've been so good. You've been so good to me. I'm so grateful for my blessings, giving you all the praise. Lord, you've been so good. You've been so good to me. I'm grateful for all of my blessings, giving you all the praise. But if it's too much, yeah, I was gonna say. If it's too much, too much. That's well, better like that. Let me see. That's better like that. No. Yeah, it is, but one of them is like helps the glare and one of them helps. They light two different ways. Lisa, you have your picture too? Yeah. There's a lot of girls. Rain, come on. I'm not recording. Where's the camera? Rain, just keep it right there and get over there. Right, y'all. Hi. Honduras. Honduras. It's Honduras. I had three lizards in my room last night and I didn't even move. I like screams. I was just like, I watched him and he was chilling. I like them things. Now, y'all understand that animals and stuff, they react off of instinct. That means if you get nervous, they get nervous. If you start doing all of this, then all of a sudden they start they getting start defensive and then that's when they want to sting you. So if you Leave your door open by accident and a mosquito gets in your room, your whole night, nine times out of ten, is going to be ruined. Unless you hunt that mosquito down and I know, kill I him. I killed him yesterday. We can kill him. Okay. What if we mistake something for a mosquito? Something was biting me. Yeah, okay, okay girls, man. That's why when you get a lot of people coming in and out the room, it's best to just like one at a time, in and out. Open and shut the door, in and out. I don't play that. I hate when it's because I don't like to kill them, you know? Yeah. They will bite That's me why all I don't over. like coming in my room. I got bit one time. Oh, no. So, so listen, y'all. Y'all ready? Yeah. We are yeah. ready. Well. We're gonna go Guide. on a quick tour. I want y'all to get familiar with the grounds, and I'm gonna just tell y'all to give y'all a little bit of pointers and stuff along the way. Come on, right, you. I start speaking. Okay, I'm straight. All right, y'all. This is the water. It comes out of the ground into here. As you can feel, it comes out of the ground hot. Okay, feel the water. Ouch! It's, it's very, very Hello, hot. All right. Now. Goes into the tanks. You have some tanks that are for hot water and some tanks for cooling the water. I was supposed to leave here an hour ago, but I still got another photo shoot and I still got a red carpet. 
Baby, you just got to understand, man. I, I, look, it's nonstop for me, but I got you as soon as I get home. I got to go. Let's go. I promise, as soon as I get home. What you waiting for? I told you soonest. I put a foot in the house. Don't even open your mouth. You should be taking me down. Don't wanna hear no excuses. Don't wanna hear your mouth, cause I got be useless. Give me the letter that I need on the two cents. I've been gone for too long. Only thing on my mind is getting some love when I'm home. Boy, I got dressed down, I had to go to work. I know you work too, cause both of us are grinding. Go to work when you get home from work. Show me you feel. 